Welcome, 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 Star Warriors. I've been doing a little bit more digging lately, and I found another article that I find interesting, to say the least. Now, the article is, The Last Jedi is the most intellectual Star Wars movie. So obviously, this article is written by someone who considers himself a fan of The Last Jedi. And we're just going to jump right into uh, reading a few excerpts. The new Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi, is thoughtful and inventive, presenting a fresh take on familiar elements like Luke Skywalker and the Force. Okay, so end statement right there. Thoughtful, inventive, presents a new take on Luke Skywalker and the Force. Are these statements true? Yes and no. Some of them are completely false, some of them are completely true. They do present a new take on Luke Skywalker and the Force. They are somewhat inventive. Okay, so those three statements are true. But, was that movie thoughtful? Absolutely, positively not. <laughs> you can't be thoughtful when you provide no backstory for important characters. You know, that uh, they almost require a backstory for the movie to be thoughtful. You can say they can have a... They, the move, their backstory or their lack thereof doesn't make it a bad movie. You can argue that, but you can't argue that it's thoughtful when it's doing that. Um, what's another example? The Skywalker lightsaber popping out of nowhere in, in The Force Awakens. There's no answer or explanation for how, how or why <laughs> uh, that lightsaber that was lost inside a great chasm uh, in Cloud City, at the at, in the bowels of Cloud City, somehow pops up in Maz Kanata's home. But let's move on, shall we? Okay, back to the reading. Fantasy author Aaron Lindsay says, Those changes have proven to be too much for some die-hard Star Wars fans. Now, I guess her or definition of diehard fans is a little bit different than mine. I think the diehard fans uh, are people who will accept whatever you throw on the screen as long as uh, the title screen and the opening crawl are Star Wars and some Star Wars related story that is uh, sort of paraphrased in the beginning of the movie. I think diehard fans will accept anything you put on the screen in a, screen in a Star Wars film. Um, on the other hand, it has been too much for some uh, hardcore Star Wars fans. I would consider myself a hardcore Star Wars fan, or formerly a hardcore Star Wars fan, uh, which I'm not going to accept just anything that pops up on the screen. But anyway, let's move on. And this next statement is uh, bracketed in quotes. When people get really attached to a property, they get a certain sense of entitlement about how the story needs to unfold. Lindsay says in episode 287 of the Geek's Guide to the Galaxy podcast. Uh, that's somewhat true. Um, when people aren't invested in a property, they're more willing to accept uh, events or things that happen that, you know, could be considered plot holes. If you look at whatever franchise you're looking at in on a wider uh, scale but I don't think it has anything to do with entitlement I, I think that's, that that uh, word right there is misused I think when people get attached to something it, entitlement has nothing to do with it I think uh, good storytelling has everything to do with it by the same token if I walk into a, a movie that I've never seen before I've never seen any uh, prequels or sequels or anything to do with that film and the film just does not make sense it does, it's not because of entitlement. I mean, maybe entitlement in the sense that I paid money to see it, you know, so I spent my hard-earned money to uh, go watch this thing, and I might want my money back at the end of the, the movie. But um, there is a such thing as bad movies that stand on their own merits as bad, or good movies that stand on their own merits as good. It has nothing to do with entitlement. So I kind of disagree with her statement there. Um, but anyway, she goes on. And I quote, and when expectations are dashed, even in a way that ought to be pleasing, because having your expectation dash, expectations dashed sometimes is a lot of fun, it's a good thing. It can be disappointing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, with all these statements that these people are making in this article, there is a measure of truth in them and a measure of uh, just false statements in them. that It's hard to separate the truth from the, the falsehoods. But we are going to try here. So, I'll reread that and sort of stop along the way. And when expectations are dashed, 
even in a way that ought to be pleasing, because having your expectations dashed sometimes is a lot of fun, it's a good thing. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, the statement is just so nebulous and ridiculous, kind of. When when a writer and a, when writers and directors are developing their story and their film, everything they do, as far as they're concerned, is supposed to be pleasing. Everything, everything is they do on the film is supposed to keep the audience in the seat watching. You know, the fact that sometimes or often it isn't pleasing has nothing to do with. <laughs> what it's supposed to be it's just they made a bad move in that in, in that instance that didn't please the audience for the most part okay so i mean saying making statements like even in a way that ought to be pleasing what does that even mean <laughs> everything ought to be pleasing <laughs> because having your expectations dashed sometimes is a lot of fun well sometimes that doesn't mean every time <laughs> so i mean she's framing the statement as if uh as if having the expectations is supposed to be fun every time, but then she sort of adds that sometimes as if that's a meaningful thing to say. It's not meaningful at all. She's just talking to hear herself talk, really, and to sort of spin a certain point of view in this article. And then she, you know, puts, and it can be disappointing. Well, duh. <laughs> now, I mean, <laughs> the dumb moments in this article are going to be abundant, I think. And just for future reference, I'm not going to say duh every time that they are appropriate. It is appropriate to say so. Um, but moving on. David Barr Kirtley is fully on board with director Rian Johnson, Johnson's vision of the Star Wars universe. And apparently this is going to be a quote for from David Barr Kirtley. This is arguably my favorite Star Wars movie, Kirtley says. It has the most moral complexity of any of the movies. It has the most surprises of any of the movies and it is the most intellectual and self-aware and gives you the most to think about afterwards. Um, I mean, all those statements are really up to point of his, his opinion. They're, they're up to point of view. They're all his opinion. None of them are universally true statements. Okay, so other than it's his favorite Star Wars movie. That's his opinion again, though. But it was the most morally compl moral complex... It has the most moral complexity of any of the movies. <laughs> It was the most morally morally gray, but that's so I, I don't I don't know what that has to do with making the film good or or anyone's favorite. When George Lucas owned uh, Lucas Film, it was one of like the positive notes that he used to advertise that uh, Star Wars brought America and to some extent the world out of this dark era back in 1977 when it came out. You know, uh, movies were all uh, depressed and the Vietnam War was going on and stuff like that. Um, and here was Star Wars with this great morality tale of, you know, uh, black and white characters. There was good on one side and evil on the other. It was, you know, just a straightforward morality tale. And that was sort of a, uh, an advantage to that film at the time. It made, uh, America and the, basically all movie audiences really excited about seeing movies again that, that, you know, and it ushered in an era where they weren't going to be all dark and bland and depressed movies. And here we are in 2017, America and much of the world is in, uh, embroiled in chaos and dark times, and movies like the DC EU movies and apparently now the Star Wars movies are feeding into that rather than uh, veering away from th th that sort of depressed mood that so many people are dealing with right now. Um, of any of the movies. <laughs> I don't... I, I mean, anyone can make any statement, I guess, uh, and as long as they don't have to provide any examples that corroborate what they're saying, I can dismiss their statement without uh, providing any examples. I mean, what surprises? Really? <laughs> I guess if you, if you consider the fact that um, Ray is nobody and Snoke is nobody, uh, yeah, maybe. Disappointing surprises, if you ask me, though. I mean, it was a surprise that they didn't explain how the Skywalker lightsaber ended up in Maz Kanata's home. Um, <laughs> but then he goes on, and is the most intellectual and self-aware, and gives you the most to think about afterwards. It didn't give me anything to think about afterwards. You know, I mean, uh, 
A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back left you with, they were both basically cliffhangers. I mean, there was, at the end of those movies, there was so obviously so much uh, that needed to be done to finish the story, right? And especially for The Empire Strikes Back, but to some extent, A New Hope as well. And this movie didn't do any more than they did as far as uh, expecting you to think about, I, I didn't, I didn't leave the theater with any questions that I, you know, even the force awakens, I, I left the theater wondering what was going to happen next. Where was the story going to go? What, who is this character? Who is that character? You know? Um, and in this one, it was just kind of like, Oh, so that's where you're going to go. This character and that character, they're really nobody. And that lightsaber just popped out of nowhere. And that ridiculous map that you made, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was just like they were going in a direction where questions aren't supposed to have answers. And if you have questions, don't expect answers. There's just a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, make up your own damn answers. <laughs> there wasn't anything else to say. But, you know, um, his statement basically is in the same vein as all the rest of the statements in this article, so why should I be surprised, right? Uh, moving on. Science fiction writer Seth Dickinson agrees that The Last Jedi is doing fascinating things with the Star Wars universe, particularly when it comes to the movie's surreal presentation of the Force. Um, once again, that's up to opinion, which I won't argue with his opinion, that's his opinion. I'll just say that my opinion is completely different. There was a sort of David Lynchian scene where Rey goes down <laughs> into the dark side hole and encounters a, encounters a mirror that turns her into a casual string of herself in, <laughs> in the past and the future. He says, I thought that scene was fantastic. It wasn't a pastiche of any other mystical vision. <laughs> I wanted Ray to have three more of those scenes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to laugh, but it's just like these guys, I can bring out just as many things I enjoyed about this movie as I hated about the movie, right? And I'm not in any way uh, shy about saying I enjoyed things, certain things about this movie. But I don't see any of these people bringing out any of the things I enjoyed about the movie. They're taking all the things that I hated the worst about this film and saying, yeah, do more of that. <laughs> I just, I, I find it incredible. I find it hilarious. But, you know, it's it just, I don't believe these people liked this film. I don't, I'm not, I can't say for certain why they're just uh, putting utter rubbish out there. I mean, they're, they're much more believable and better ways they could make the film look good than taking the worst aspects of it and just feeding it to an audience as if it was good. You know, I, <laughs> I know to some extent the public is easy to fool and to some extent the public loves being fooled, but <laughs> I, I got, I got, <laughs> I got to make sure that this is the site that I'm looking at. Isn't the onion. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> is this some sort of big spoof? It's like all the people making statements in this article are, you know, want to portray themselves as intellectuals. They want to, you know, portray Star Wars more like Dune. Hmm. <laughs> Star Wars has always had that sort of spiritual side of things, but it's an action movie. You know, um, you want to get all, you want to get all, you know, cerebral and stuff in a Star Wars movie to where it, it's just a bunch of hokey, uh, scenes that don't make any sense to regular people <laughs> get ready for Star Wars to start you know making uh, made for TV movies that's all I'm saying <laughs> you know we can all expect Star Wars to be sold on a corner near you <laughs> I mean, there's certain things that made Star Wars popular and these people just don't seem to be interested in any of that so <laughs> I don't know why I'm reading this article to you people, but I hope you're getting as big a kick out of it as I am. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I've, th this uh, article has gone on, or video has gone on long enough. I think you get the idea. I'll leave a, a link to the to the uh, article down below, and um, you guys have a good have a good uh, rest of the week. <laughs>